It's day 22. We've just got through 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I know it got interrupted. I know we had snowstorms and ice storms. And it kind of messed up our routine. But it doesn't mess up God's routine. So I want to encourage you. You started the year beginning Focusing on the Lord, putting him first, whether you were able to make it to prayer or not, which incidentally, that last week, the prayer requests, I asked for extra help. We had so many prayer requests from this last week that came out, um, and they were coming in even during the week. People were adding to them. And so I just encourage you to use those prayer cards and, and let God use others to minister to you. So anyway, good way to start the year. Thank you for joining us. We're day 22, and we're ready to go. Right Now, if you're not stirred up, I'm going to stir you up because today's message, I've, been, I've had a three-part series, and I've enjoyed the three-part series. It's been good about loving each other deeply, and we'll get into that. But I can honestly tell you today, and I say this kind of stuff, all, Pastor, you say this is all the time. This is like the best message I've given. It's just like I have so much confidence in the word today, and maybe it's just me. But I believe you as a body are going to receive it today. And because you've gone through this 21 days of preparation, because you started the new year out, when many people are dropping away from church, you're here, right? And so that means you're hungry and you're, you're with the Lord. I know it's going to be so good I went and got myself a bottle of water because I have a feeling I'm going to get a little parched during this. And so I feel the preach on, I feel the word on, and I just want to encourage you, just lean in, listen, not necessarily to what I say, but as I'm speaking, listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. So Father God, today as we enter into this Next uh, 30, 35 minutes, Lord, and just seeking your word and, and, and bringing forth your plan for uh, what you would have for us this day, Lord. Father God, I surround, I cover this place, Lord, with, a, with just a protection over distractions. A protection over our hearts and minds that would cause us to drift away from anything you have planned for us. Lord, this excitement you have put in me, Lord, I know it's here because I felt it from the congregation today. Father God, as people came in today, they were ready. They, are, they want to hear what you have for them. And Lord, I believe you're speaking to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we've been on this series, Love Each Other Deeply. And uh, we've, we've, we've had several weeks of it. And, uh, and it's based off of a, off of a um, particular scripture. And I'll get there in just a moment. But it actually comes from our devotional. We have a devotional that many of us are following, and it's all based on the book of love, uh, the book of John, and it's about loving each other deeply. And the intro is this scripture, John 15, starting verse 12. It says, it says to love each other deeply as much as I have loved you. So this is Jesus telling us to do this. Love each other deeply as much I have, as I have loved you. For the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And we talked several weeks ago about forgiveness, about how important that was to forgive just as Jesus did. We talked last week about serving and about, remember we used the example of Jesus being a servant of all and washing feet. And, and, but before we get into the actual theme for today, I'm going to try and kind of lead you into it. I'm going to kind of share some scripture that's going to set us up to have our hearts open to this third section here. Ready? First of all, I got a question for you. Put your thinking caps on. Question of the moment, okay? Why did Jesus come to us? Think about it. Why, you know, I mean, he's, he's up there with the Father, you know. I mean, of course we know the Word of God says he had to. It was prophesied. But, but what, what motivated? What, why did he come? We know simple things. I'll just speak for you, you know. Uh, he came so that we can have life full and life to the fullest. John 10, 10. We know that, right? Um, we also know he came not for the righteous, not, but for the unrighteous, so that, so that people could receive forgiveness, right? We came, according to the word, to, give, to be a ransom for many. He gave his life. We know, we know he did that. We know he didn't come to be served, but to serve others. There's lots of amazing reasons to say or think, why did Jesus come? 
But I think today I'm going to give you something that maybe you've never thought about. And I haven't thought about this too much. But the second question is this. I ask, how did Jesus come to us? How? You know, the whys and hows are really, really important. And so I'm going to kind of set us up and give us some imagery to think about how Jesus came here on earth, came to us. You might say, well, he came to us. How? He came to us by the way he delivered the word, the way he was preaching, the way he was teaching. He came to us by the way you know, we actually saw him that was recorded. He, he did healing. He came to us in physical body, and we saw him do all these things. And you would be right. But I'm going to center in on one particular scripture, one particular phrase on how Jesus came to us. And I can relate to it so well, and I think you can too. And it's found in... Luke 7, verse 34. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. The Son of Man came to earth to share the gospel. What did he, how did he do it? He came eating and drinking with people. It's crazy. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. In fact, some people called him a drunkard. Somebody called him a glutton. Oh, is that them church potlucks, right? <laughs> they did. So in this message about loving each other deeply, I'm going to use the example of how Jesus came to us and how he showed love to each and every one of us and how we, it's so simple if we just follow his pattern, we can show love to one another also. Again, I talked about week number one. Talked about unforgiving sinners. Then last week about washing feet and about being a servant. And, and some of you even stepped up. I had someone this morning step up. I'm going to start serving in the church. You're listening. You're following the response of God. You're serving. But I want us to take the imagery of Jesus breaking bread. I want us to take the imagery, not just of the communion or the last supper, although we'll talk about that, but of just Jesus eating fellowshipping, sharing food with other people. And how practical and how easy we've made it. And I'm going to contrast it on how our society has made that so difficult to do these days. Pretty eye-opening. So Jesus showed us that we love each other by the first fill in there is, is really by forming community. Jesus formed community. First with his disciples, and then he showed them how to do it, and then with others. Jesus formed community. It's so critical. In the New Testament, meals were more than just a time to eat stuff that's good or, 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 or give you some sort of even spiritual nutrition, right? They were many times hours long. A meal, you know, in, the, in, the, in, those, in those days, you know, you've seen the, the true pictures of the Last Supper. They're, they're not sitting at a table. They're reclining at a table. They would actually, you know, and, and you know, you... If you're reclined, you, you know, you can eat more because your gut's not in the way. And so, you know, it's just, again, I'm kind of joking, but I'm serious. It was a relaxed event. It wasn't like all formal. And I mean, they had protocol, but it was like, it, it took a long time, right, to go through a meal. So Jesus broke bread. First century believers, they think of the book of Acts, these people, that's what they were used to. Meals were not just, oh, got to grab a bite like we do, run to McDonald's, go through the drive through you know, hurry and eat and get the kids to practice, you know. It wasn't like that, right? I want us to look at that imagery of breaking bread. So we're going to look carefully at Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. This gives the best picture, I think, where the believers form a community. It says in the, the heading in my Bible, this is the heading for it at, at Acts 42. And when it says all, it means all New Testament believers. It starts out, all the believers devoted devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. Now, just stop there. You'll notice the word, they use the word devoted. They were devoted to this. It wasn't something that just happened by accident. They planned on it. They made it regular. 
They devoted the spiritual disciplines of, of fellowship and breaking of bread. Then in verse 43, a deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostle performed many miraculous signs and wonders. Now, just stop there before I even get to my notes. They're just having dinner. They're not in church. And they're not waiting for the host or the pastor to perform miracles. It just is all happening amongst them. That's a picture of us. If you come with the right attitude and the right heart, you're not coming to get you're coming to share what God has in you. And we, think, we limit ourselves. Oh, I don't know enough. I don't, maybe that was the piece. It's something not right. No. We share what we have. All right. I forgot where I was. All right. A deep sense of awe came over all of them. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place. They shared everything they had. All the believers were together. They were constantly doing this. Verse 45, they sold their property and possessions, shared the money with those in need. In fact, if you read ahead in Acts 4, you'll find out that no one was in need because they were just beating everybody's needs. Anytime there was a need, nobody went and signed up for food stamps or assistance at the local thrift store. Nothing wrong with those things, but I'm just saying you didn't have time to do that because your own people were taking care of you. See, it's just a whole different thought. Well, the government's supposed to do that. Is it? <laughs> Look where that's gone. Is. So anyway, so. <laughs> and 46, they worshiped together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper. They shared their meals with great joy. Just like we had in here this morning to worship. Great joy. Generosity, 47, all while praising God, enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Honestly, don't raise your hand, but does that look like your life? Devoted to a community, seeing them like, every, I mean, unless you're in the mission, you have no choice, right? But, but. <laughs> You're devoted to a community. It's a good example of how we're to leave our life. There's an overflowing presence of God, or do you just sense it on Sunday or a small group? It should be a part of our everyday life. Now, I'm just going to bring some non-spiritual things in because I think it's very interesting because people have actually studied this. Why is it so hard in America? I haven't seen studies in other countries. But why is it so hard in America for us Americans... To spend time with each other. What's gotten in the way? Did you know there's actual people that study this? And I, I got a few stats for you because they're, they're kind of interesting. And, and I, I didn't look up to see the references, if they were verified or not. But it sure fit my sermon good. All right. One of the things they found that's changed relationships for the worst that I will not give up is air conditioning. There's notable, once air conditioning became very common in America, people stayed in more. You used to go outside in the evening to cool off. <laughs> you know, your house is still hot. And some of you don't have air conditioning, you know that. And so especially people in town, they, they would like intermingle and talk and get out. The air conditioner has actually lessened our contact with other people. Interesting. Here's another one. Again, the author just noticed, noticed this one. I wouldn't want to go back to any other way, but the attached garage. <laughs> Used to be they were always detached. They were always separate. You had to park your car in there. Then you had to get out and actually wave to your neighbor. Do you know I never have to see my neighbors? I have an, And that's the other part. I'm not, I'm just being serious. I've got an electric garage door opener, which is another thing that added to it. You don't even have to go out and do it anymore. I pull up to my garage, and just a moment before I get there, I hit that button. Up goes the door. In goes my pickup. Click. Goes down. Don't see a soul. Now, I'm kind of making fun of me. 
But that's kind of how it is everywhere. That's kind of how it is everywhere. People used to, in their front, you know, they would like, we're watching this uh, home improvement show, Restoring Galveston, and Galveston has these old, old homes, and almost all of them, they're restoring the porches, right? Because that's what they did. They didn't have air conditioning. They would sit on the porches out front with rocking chairs, and they would talk. They were used to doing that. That's gone in our society. It's gone. Here's a couple other real quick ones. Um, this is date you because some of you this won't make any sense, but for many of us it makes is, is remember when the answering machine came in? Did you know there used to be a day you had to answer the phone to see who was there? And in those days, everybody answered their phone because you couldn't wait to get a call. Those days, again, in the, I don't remember what that was, the 80s, early 80s, somewhere, I don't know. You know, and then, then, you, then you got call screening, and so then you could hear them talk. And then, at one point, believe it or not, we got caller ID. But here's the deal. When it first came out, it wasn't for everybody. You had to pay extra for it. I paid that extra, you know, because it was so awesome to see the name that came up. So you actually began screening calls. So now, now, and now, of course, with our smartphones, you know, if they're not on our contacts, most of you probably, unless you're even an older generation, I still meet some people that answer all their calls. I don't mean to age any of you, because that's the way we're trained to do it. But most younger people, I don't know that person. I'm not answering it. Besides that, only my friends would text me. They would never call. And so, again, you just, it's just change. Instagram? Instagram now? You don't even have to talk to people. You pull it up. And if you like something they said or did, you just double tap it. And it says you love them. And they got response right away. No contact at all. I love it. Now, I say all that again to say, I'm kind of making fun, but it's true. No wonder we have trouble connecting. No wonder we have trouble talking. No wonder we have trouble just meeting people to meet, let alone share the love of Jesus, right? So I'm not going to take credit for this. I found this. Somebody wrote, rewrote Acts 42, 242, and I'm going to put it up there. Now, I'm not into changing the Bible, and you have to look at this. This is a parody. This is a, not a joke, but this is a, this is to get us to think. He wrote it, rewrote it this way. The Christians were devoted to themselves and occasionally got to church when they had time. No one was filled with awe because there were no signs and wonders performed by the believers. They call that a dead church. Very few of the believers were together, and they had almost nothing in common because they had no real time with each other. If they sold something, they used the money to buy something to better themselves. They ate on the run, kept to themselves, and really are too rush to enjoy one another or give praise to God. They claimed to love God, and they... And they didn't really love each other, and, very, and, and they felt very empty and alone. As a result, most people disliked them, and very few people were ever saved. Now, I'm kind of laughing, but it's very sad. Because honestly, and I'm not pointing any fingers, most of us can more easily identify with that poor American interpretation of today's life than what scripture is. I'm not telling you to throw out your answering machines. I'm not telling you to pull your garage out of your house and set it next door. <laughs> Turn off your air conditioning and set up. I'm just saying, it could be better. What if we, what if we, what if we allowed, and, and I think the enemy works this way. It's they're subtle, you know. Of course, I love improvements. I love, you know, I love a thermostat. I don't want to have to stoke the fire anymore. I, all that stuff's good. But we replace it with not being together and being with people. I want to present to you today an opportunity. An opportunity for something much better, right? A committed community of people. We break bread together. 
because we love one another and we truly celebrate the presence of God. And God is so good. <laughs> Most of us went nuts when we were iced in. We just can't do it alone. It's not the same. We need other believers to join hands with us, join our voices, and worship our good God. <laughs> because that's how good he is. As we talk about loving your community, the image I want you to have in mind is, is again, this, this thought, this bullet point. It's in your thing. It's just sharing the love of Jesus. If I were in community more, how would the love of Jesus, how would I love each other deeply by the love of Jesus coming out? I'm going to give you just two simple thoughts on these. And I believe it's going to help us today. The first one Again, I'm going to introduce it before I get to it to kind of get your mind going. We live in a world, you and I, that really values independence, right? We just do, right? It's just, it's just you want to be financially independent. You know, you don't want to have to depend on government or your parents or your friends' loans or what. You, you want to be financially, and there's, there's good parts to this. We want to be relationally, relationally independent in the fact that we don't want these bad codependent relationships with people you know we want godly relationships which means that we don't want to like depend on their approval for us to you know even smile that day so so we're just we're, we're teaching ourselves that we we have to pull up our bootstraps you know and stand on our feet and and, and which part of that is good and but we're kind of taught that i don't need you i've got my smartphone i can find anything i need I don't need to come to church. I can hear any message around the world that's probably better than yours. I'm talking to myself, you know. I don't need, I don't need that. I don't need the drama. Did you know there's drama in church? Did you know there's drama? And, and there is and in small groups and even in families. I don't need the drama, right? right? The problem is <laughs> to be a follower of Jesus, that is the direct opposite of being independent. To be a Jesus follower, a Christian, is actually to be very dependent. Because you cannot save yourself. You're totally dependent on Jesus. You're totally dependent on the grace and forgiveness of Jesus. You can't be independent because the Bible teaches in James 5... You can't find freedom. You can't find healing unless you let people pray with you. I mean, it's just, it's just everything in Scripture has to do with God being connected with him and other people. A more biblical phrase, because we always say, you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And I'm not against that, but that's very Americanized. And that's not in the Bible. It's really not. God doesn't leave it at that. To be personal with God means to be personal with all the family of God. What, it, what he really is saying, as I, is I believe to be, is that we need to have a shared relationship with, with Jesus. I have, a, I have a relationship with Jesus. Pastor Dan has a relationship with Jesus. I have a relationship with Pastor Dan. It's together. My, it's a shared relationship. Yes, it has to begin with you. It always, but we just, sometimes we just stay there. Well, I got my Savior. I'm going to heaven. That's not the way God designed it for you to grow and to blossom, to be everything he's called you to be. He's called you into this shared relationship because God has this whole list of people you don't even know yet that you're going to be crossing paths with, that he's expecting us to share the love of God. You may not even know him, and some of them you do, and some of them you're avoiding them. But you know they're on your list, right? Shared relationship. So here's two things to kind of walk us through this. Make it easy. This one's easy. It's safe here, right? With other believers at church. That's, I mean, that's, that's probably the most obvious. Maybe that's why some people stay away from church. Because pastor's going to force me into relationships with people. Pastor's going to force me to get involved with stuff. Pastor's going to tell me that I need to be friends with people. And I'm tired of people messing me up. Well, I'm sorry. That's the word. I want to encourage you to share the love of Jesus with others at church. Hebrews 10.24 says this. It says, let us think of ways, not a way, 
This should be like on our mind. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Aren't you thinking about, I know I am, when I get up on Sunday morning, I'm thinking about all you. I'm thinking about when I see you. And I'm thinking about how I'm going to be disappointed because there's some people I won't see. Do you have a community of people where you can get together and say, how can we help people? See, most community is built on this, like, hey, let's go fishing. Let's go out to dinner. Let's go play cards. Again, those are nothing wrong with those things, but they're all independent and not about growing the kingdom. What if you had that plus, plus, it's not either or, plus, as you get to know people, opportunity to build relationship with them. How can we make a bigger difference? You know, it's no fun to do a, what's an event? Uh, let's do a, uh, uh, um, like sometimes we passed out flyers for an event here. It's no fun to do it alone. No. It's miserable. But two or three people going around talking, sharing, going to a park, sharing people. It's totally different because that's, that's how God designed you to be. It's one of the biggest challenges that we have. But let me tell you this. Presence matters. And the saddest thing, I think, over COVID, besides the fact that it's caused a lot of harm to people and all that kind of stuff, and it's an awful disease, was it, it taught us, taught society, you can live with no contact. Well, it taught us we can't, but they want everyone to think. And there are some people that still are living without contact, secluded on their own. It's always better together. And there's some watching right now online. And don't shut me off, but you never come to church. You're missing something. And I'm going to explain what you're missing in just a moment in a way I think everyone can relate. This is like, this is like when I wrote this out and shared this and pondered, it's like, oh, this is brilliant, Lord. This is awesome. Okay. Let me give you a practical example. Everybody loves Netflix, right? Any, any service of your choice. Imagine a new movie comes out and Cindy and I want to watch it. And we do it on a third, I don't know, let's pick a, let's, I don't know, let's, we do it on a, let's do it on a Friday night. We're going to watch this movie at seven o'clock. Well, McKenna and Skyler come over and it'd be good for them too. And, and we want them to watch it too. And so we're, we like the four of us, we talk together. We're all going to watch this movie at seven o'clock. Now, Cindy, she's going to watch it in the living room. Okay. Me, I like the bedroom. I'm going to sit in the bedroom and watch it. Okay. McKenna's going to go in the guest room because we got Netflix in there, right? And Sky, she's always on that thing. So she's going to be on her, she's going to be on her, her iPad and she's going to be watching it. And I say, let's all watch it exactly at seven o'clock. There's no community. No. What do you like to do? You like to look each other. And some people get annoyed by this. Sometimes you want to laugh. People like, uh -huh. yeah, you, but you want to, you want to, you want to communicate with each other. You want all four of you sitting on the couch or the chairs with the dogs, with the popcorn, with the licorice, with uh, you know, and laughing and going through it. And I can't believe they did this. Or I'm so glad. I. It's a whole different experience because you're present. If you're sitting alone. Yeah, that movie was okay. Actually, the movie doesn't have to be very good if you're with people you love, you know? Church doesn't have to be very good. I'm giving myself an out here. I don't have to preach very good if all you guys are just happy to be together. What does it matter what the pastor preaches? We're here, and like the early church, God is moving. No matter what's happening up there or back there, God is moving and God's going to use me to deliver life. God is going to use me to perform miracles. He's doing the miracles, but he lets me be a part. What if that was our attitude? What, what was that every time we gathered together? Totally different, right? Listen, here's more facts. The average American Christian attends church one time a month right now in America. These are not non-believers. These are Christians. 
average one time a month. I don't know what to do with that. I'm just throwing my hands up. I don't know. Most people spend more than an hour a day on social media. A day. And it's such a big sacrifice to come to church once a month. And again, that's average. That means some people do it less. Most of you are in the more. Most of our people in our body, probably 75% make it three to four times a month. And 25% are once a monthers. Okay, if you want something better, <laughs> you got to choose something better. If you want church just to be, I show up on Sunday, that's all it's going to be. But if you want your life to be transformed by Jesus in 2024, I spent 21 days in prayer, in fasting, believing for this year. I'm tired of 2023. I'm tired of 2022. I'm tired of 2021. I'm tired of 2020. Each year I say it's going to get better, and it doesn't. Well, those things are always going to happen. But you don't have to stay the same. You, you are the ones that make a church alive. You are the one that bring a body of people alive. Oh, I feel like I'm preaching good today. So point number two is this. Be with a committed group of people. That's what we're called to do. A community, a committed community of people. An ongoing community. Let's look back at Acts 2.46. They what? They shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Our pastors and elders, we used to just meet. Yeah. Now we're using Pastor Kristen's house and we make her and Michael fix us dinner. <laughs> it's totally different when you eat. The whole atmosphere changes. And, and again, and again, their cooking's already always good, but it wouldn't matter if it was good or bad. It, when you're, it, it just doesn't matter. You can have bologna sandwiches and orange juice. I, I don't care. As long as you're together. Can you imagine the taste of orange juice, bologna sandwiches? It doesn't. But I wouldn't complain. Because you're in fellowship together. And you know what? More things happen. The Holy Spirit moves more. You, you, your thought train happens. It's just like you're not thinking about the next topic. You're like actually caring and loving one another. They shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Verse 47, all the while praising God, enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. See, we, most of us, we see each other once a week on Slack, or on, in person. We see each other. A lot of us are on the Dream Team, so we share what we call Slack channel where we can communicate. We see each other that way. Many of us text one another. But there's nothing like sharing a meal with Jesus in the center. And I'm not, I mean, I love our big potlucks. I'm not even talking big potluck. I'm just talking, you know, with Jesus it was just, what, bread and wine, you know. It was, it's not, you know, we celebrate with grape juice and, and a little dab of dried cardboard. You know, I mean, we don't, it's like, it, it doesn't matter that it's not, you know, Dave's bread. It's like, it's just, it's the thought of having communion together. And we're so hung up on, you know, what our house is like and what were they going to think of me and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, man, I hope you think of me. You just want to be with me. I just want to be with you. So small groups, they start. They start. Week after next. We put, do them in seasons. Some of you, your next step is just to be in one. There are still people in our church who have never come to a small group, and it blows my mind. I've never met a person in our body who's been to a small group that says, that's not for me, I'm never going to do that again. I haven't, right? Be a part of a small group. People that you can love each other deeply and do fellowship with each other. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through this. I'm going to announce the groups that are coming up. 
and I'm going to have a few of the leaders come up and share about them. And what I want our leaders to do is to tell you about the oncoming group and share a little bit about why you need to be in it and what can you get out of it. See, I already gave you reason. You don't even have, they don't even have to do that. What do you get out of it? <laughs> well, when they, when they gathered together, God moved among them and, and miracles were performed. It doesn't matter if the small group is a Bible study or it's how to fix dinner. Yeah, I know, that'd be a good group. <laughs> it, the idea is, in order, we have to fight against our society that says, do your job, stay busy, kids have sports, kids have school, jobs are 40 plus hours, some of them are 60 hours, you're exhausted. So you have to find a way to turn that around and say, okay, what's more important? How do I, Lord, what do we do? How do we be in fellowship? So we got some small groups coming up, and we got a couple traditional ones and a couple non-traditional, and I want to share just a little bit. Why don't I have Cindy come up and get ready, and Pastor Christian come up and get ready, and Vicki come up and get ready. Just kind of stand over here. We're going to share some, and so the first one we're going to talk about, and Daniel will need to bring, you saw the mic? They'll need the mic when we get there. So just come up and stand by me, and, and uh, the first one, we've got men's group going again, all right? Now, men's group we're going to have on, like we have been having on, on Wednesday nights. And so we're going to, um, we're going to, excuse me, Monday nights at 6.30. So we're going to do it again. We always try and work on a, a, getting better at what God wants us to do. So the men are going to gather separately from the ladies. We're actually going to be probably doing two studies this term. I'm going to require everybody to bring their Bibles. And if you're an anti-Bible person, you can use your smartphone, just have it open and ready. But rather than focus on answering 100 questions about what was taught during the teaching, it's like, I want, I want the gifts moving between us. I want us to discuss what's happening in Scripture and let God come alive. And not dependent on the leader, but upon each other. So that will begin Monday after the next um, Beginning February, I think it's actually the 5th or something or somewhere in there. So, Cindy, why don't you come share about what you got? Well, like Pastor said, um, we've, in the past we've always done uh, Are you men on? and women. Yes. Okay, on. there. He's trying. Um, men and women have done the same study. Well, this, year, this time we're, we're not going to do that. And um, it's really been on my heart for the women, but I just, like Pastor said, we're going to go a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to be in the Word more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You go ahead. You do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Still come, watch 
the video and be it a part of the session. Uh, there's, this isn't an extensive weekly study. It was only like three days, so it's, it's really taught by Booker. It's, it's fun. It's anointed. It's, you will not be disappointed. So, so if you would like to book, come with me and let me know. Um, otherwise, come and be part of it. Okay. Next Not tomorrow. Fourth. Yeah, the week after Monday. Fourth. Yeah, there you. Yeah, okay, Vicky. Okay. I love Vicky's group. They're in here. Oh, I'll, I'll go. I'm sorry. Go. What, what are our fun yeah, they are. We are a, a group of young ladies. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll teach some of them. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, our group is so happy. Yes. Yep. So, uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to have fun, you want to meet and have a lot of guys with the ladies, we laugh, we, we're knee here in the back here, and we're really loud. The mm -hmm. girls here is back there. Pastor Jerry walks through and Pastor <laughs> Mary walks through. It is a lot of fun. Come and join us. Good. I'll teach you all this. You don't yeah. even know how to, how to do it. I'll teach you. Yes, right. Good. If I don't know how to do it, my daughter does a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Very good. Not this year. Not this time. God's going to be moving. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Monday. 1030 Monday morning. Okay, Pastor Kristen, okay. go. Your turn. Last but least, the last shall be first. Sure. sure. Best for us. I just have a few groups. Mine are not on Mondays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've been uh, our community group church all the time. We do events not because they're not fun. They're just great. But it's, we've been through our Power Women Power Team event for years. Mm -hmm. Our weekly bulletin for LGBTQ and Christ group. So I need help uh, in that event.
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Very good. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. So that's a good display of what's happening, um, uh, happening as we proceed into the week after the next. Uh, you can easily, easily sign up for them. And so the, the best way and the fastest way is if you have a smartphone. It's so easy. You turn your camera on, and I can even do it right here. I go to there, and I, and I go right to the, and there it is. There's the sign up for the groups here. So just like it shows there, I just touch small group semester, and there I have this next thing. I have all the groups. I even did it in the same color, so you will, like, remember, I want to be in that green group. And all you do is touch it, and there's a place to register if you aren't sure how to do that or you can't get it off of here inside every welcome guide. There's a QR code in the backs of a lot of these chairs. There's a QR code. It's the same way we also give people that give online. will like scan that and, and there's a place to do online giving, all that sort of stuff there. You can even get real trippy and if you text, you text the word connect. Don't I put the little apostrophes, just connect to 877-896-896. 1058 and your text will come back and there'll be a, a link and you just click it and it takes you right to that page. Now, if you don't know any of that technology or don't have smartphones, don't worry. Any one of our beautiful, bright staff and leadership and anyone else in the church could help you. We can register. It's not to hold us back. It's to like really simplify it because we believe that God is getting ready <laughs> to minister through you folks. You'll find a change as we do our groups. So many times you've all been dependent on pastor leading it or the elders leading it or leaders leading it. And you're going to find we're going to be we're going to be looking for people just so we can break because we're getting ready to grow. We're getting ready for discipleship to spread. That's why you need that tool that Pastor Kristen wants to teach us. That's why you need to be in Vicky's group so you can learn how to some of you don't know how to relate and have fun. All right? That's why you need to be in a Bible study so you can like learn, oh, I can look through the Word of God. I can discuss it. It all helps you be comfortable and familiarizes yourself with it. So why did Jesus come? We know Jesus came to give us life and life to the fullest. How did he come? He came to us. He came to us. To eat and drink with us. He came to you, showed us. I came to you so you, you could learn how to do this. Open up your home. Open up your life. Share a coffee. Share a meal with those around you. So number, so the fill in there, we share our relationship with Jesus in our community with others. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. I ask today that you would Stir up our hearts out of our comfort zones and out of our garages, out of our air conditioned homes at times. Lord, that we would do life together. There's some in this room today, and I'm just going to be really bold. I'm going to have you raise your hand. So I don't like to put people on the spot. I will not call you out, but I want you to make an acknowledgement to God as I pray over you. Are there people in the room that, like me, realize you've been a bit too secluded? Are there people in this room like me that say, God, I can't go out there alone. I need you with me. Are there people in this room that would say, I want to see those miracles. I believe they're going to happen and I want to be a part of it. Just raise your hand with me and let me pray over you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I see the hands that are raised. I'm going to give
give you another minute. There's some of you, you don't have your hands up, and I know it's supposed to be. You think you've got it all together, but you don't. You need the Lord to do something miraculous in you. You need the Lord to cause you to step out of your comfort zone. You're a little afraid because you know if you ask him, he will do it. But you're in the comfort of friends. Okay, Lord, our hands are up. Lord, I ask that those of us that have our hands raised, you would do a new work in us. You would stretch us. You would help us step out of our comfort zone and be in community with others. Just like Jesus showed us, as simple as sharing a meal. As simple as caring for others. Lord, we say we're on your team. You didn't call us to do Christianity alone. You called us to be in partnership with others. So before the world, but mostly before you, Lord, we're declaring, Jesus, 2024 is going to be different. We're going to step out of our zones and in with people. Put your hands down. There could be some before we go that you've not yet asked the Lord to be into your life. And I don't want us to walk away without giving you that opportunity. Will you say, Pastor, you say, I, gotta, I need to have the, be in relationship with Jesus and others, but I don't have a relationship with me yet, with him yet. Today's a good day you can do that. If there's anybody in the sound of my voice or even online, you didn't turn me off after I said you should be in church. There's some that can't be because they're home for different reasons, but you want that relationship with Jesus. Lift your hand for just a moment and I'll have you put it down. Anybody in the room? Thank you, I see that hand. Thank you, I see that room hand. You can put your hands down. I see that too. Let's all pray this together. It's very simple. Dear Jesus, thank you for creating me and loving me. Even though I've ignored you and gone my own way. I realize I need you in my life. I am sorry for my sins. I ask you to forgive me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead so that I could be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I got good news. It starts there, but now we're all on this journey together. We need each other. We've pronounced our faith in Christ. We have a whole world to reach, and it's not dependent on you alone. It's us together. And God is going to stir you. He's going to energize you. He's going to give you everything you need. Amen? Let's all stand up. I'm going to release you. If you brought a tithe or an offering, and very importantly, if you made a decision for Christ and or have a prayer request, get that filled out on those cards. In just a moment, the buckets will go around and we'll go ahead and collect those cards and those offerings. Thank you for taking time for being with us today, not just for me, but for all those around you. Wouldn't church be boring if it was just me and Tim and that was it? You know, I love Tim, but it's like, it's not the same. Having you all here is just a beautiful thing. All right, go ahead, ushers, receive those, and let me pray over all of you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the ability, Lord, to give, give offerings, financial offerings. Thank you for watching over our jobs. I know of a couple gentlemen in this room today that are believing for new jobs and career paths. Father, we believe corporately you're moving in our midst. Lord, that supernaturally by your presence of us being together, you're opening the doors for them and those that I don't know about in ways they'd never thought about before. And they're going to say, this is God. <laughs> Lord, and we're going to rejoice together. Father, I thank you for Northwest Bible Training Center, Lord, for loving them, for them loving us. Lord, for them to be able to share in worship with us, Lord, for being a part of our community, Father. We fight with them the daily lifting up of your name, the daily putting down the, the, the works of the enemy and releasing freedom to others around them. Use every single one of them and us to bring life to others. Father God, as we go this day, Lord, we're released to walk in freedom. 
So may the Lord just bless you. Oh Lord, may your light shine upon us. And may we have peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, you guys have the best week ever. Remember, week after next, groups start. Yeah, go ahead if they haven't gone down. And uh, sign up for groups. And if you're not sure how to sign up, just find somebody and say, how do I sign up? And someone will help you. God bless you guys. Have the best week ever.